Good afternoon. You've just had your lunch. You should be full of energy. Good afternoon. Okay, please come up front. Uh, we'll not bite you or we'll not uh, hit you. So, uh, so if you can, probably you know, take a minute and come up. So it can be a little more intimate conversation. Yeah. So thank you, uh, and thank you for um, attending this uh, panel. Uh, my name is Mukesh Gupta. Uh, I uh, I've been working for almost 20 years. Uh, I currently work as director as uh, director of customer advocacy at SAP. Uh, I'm an author. I've written a book called Your Startup Mentor. Uh, it's the world's first business poem. Uh, I have a blog. I have a radio show. So a lot of stuff keeps me busy though and keeps my wife complaining. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'd like to ask all my panel uh, panelists to introduce themselves. So maybe. Hi, uh, this is Deepak Kovinci. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur for more than 20 years, mostly in enterprise software. Uh, in, uh, as part of many startups, some of them were successful, some were not. In between, I was also at Sterling Commerce, which was a large enterprise software company. And we got acquired by IBM, so I was at IBM for a period of time. Currently, I am a founder of a company called Julia Computing, uh, which is based on uh, Julia language. We provide support and service on this uh, language for numerical computing. So th that's what my background is. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sujit, uh, Sujit Zachariah. I head a startup called Nifty Window. Uh, we are in the online to offline uh, customer acquisition space. Uh, prior to this, I actually started my um, career as a technologist uh, researcher at Intel and then transitioned all the way to becoming a st uh, an entrepreneur. And, and the journey has been uh, moving in product management roles at uh, Gartner and then at Yahoo and so forth. So uh, I've made a transition from a pure technologist to uh, a startup entrepreneur now. Thank you, Sujit. Hi, I'm Ahi. Um, I'm a founder of a company called Doc Engage. It's in a healthcare space. So this sub, uh, tagline today is, you know, as product manager, the CEO of their product, right? So in my case, the company is the product. So I'm the CEO of the company. Um, having said that, I've, what I felt, um, around 20 years in the industry, I've done a lot of product uh, during Sundays and, and now as a startup. But what I felt is uh, probably not a lot of product managers wanted to be a CEO, right? That's number source. <laughs> so, uh, so that said, no, we will talk about Things you know what is what does it take to be the CEO of the product? You know if you are doing it, and what does it take to be an entrepreneur? Maybe right. So we'll talk about that. Thank you, Ahi. So, hi, uh, I'm Amit Goel. Uh, I am currently the vice president and head of product management in Nolarity. It's a leading cloud telephony company in Asia now. Uh, before that, I had my own startup. Uh, I was the founder of a company called Patterbuzz in digital content. I ran it for two and a half years before going bust a bit, and uh, before that, I was a so-called intrapreneur in a company called NDS, which got acquired by Cisco. And I did a lot of innovation kind of stuff there. And I've been there in like tech space for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Super. So the topic that we have uh, at hand today uh, is about uh, uh, product owners or product managers being the CEOs of their product lines. So which means that you know they have end-to-end -end responsibility for the product that they manage. Now. Now, first question is that, you know, uh, is that uh, the reality or should product managers be the CEOs of their products? Are product managers the CEOs of their products? So, I would like to ask the panelists to maybe, you know, go one by one and then if there are anyone else in the audience, uh, we can take uh, one view from the audience as well, right? Yeah, so this is an interesting question, Mukesh, and I, I do agree that a product manager should be a CEO of the product. And I've seen uh, through my experiences, some of the best product lines and more successful products have product managers who have that uh, view and that attitude, right? That's what matters. Uh, so what that means is that the product manager has to have a full end-to-end -end understanding of that particular product and the, uh, the entire business around it, which means customers, revenues, how many customers, market size, 
you know, funding. So that means they have to sell the investment on the product to the CEO and the CFO of the company. They have to sell the idea to the salespeople, they have to educate them, so they go out and sell. So having that end-to-end -end understanding and constantly kind of internally and externally selling the product is their main job to make it successful. The other aspect is also that some of the best companies are also have CEOs who have the product management mindset. Like for example, Steve Jobs, right? And similarly, many such examples where the most interesting disruptive products came out of companies where uh, that mindset was there from the top. Interesting. Thank you. Sujit? Yeah, sure. So, um, to that question, I have two parts. What is, first is our understanding of what a CEO does and second, what a PM should or should not do, right? So, first from a CEO's perspective, we often view it, uh, yes, as the head of a, of a role, um, whether it's a product or a company. In that sense, yes. But if you really think about what a CEO does day in and day out, either in, an, in a startup raising funds, right, or in a, uh, in a mature company, their primary fidu fiduciary responsibilities to the shareholders. On the other hand, uh, a product manager, the role that is given out to them as per the job description is a very different one from what you aspire to be. What I mean by that is what is given to you on the plate is a certain set of responsibilities as a product manager but you can actually aspire to be much more than that, which is basically becoming like a CEO. What does a CEO actually mean? To me, it means one thing, the buck stops here, right? Anything related to that product, that buck stops here. In that sense, yes, you should aspire to be, but then you can say, I don't have the organizational responsibilities, I don't have the ability to control or influence. That is where I, I mean it as an, aspiring, uh, uh, um, something that you need to aspire for. It doesn't, it is not given to you on the plate, but you have to build it. You need to be involved, you need to build that influence, and it will come over time. So, uh, so yes, it is a, it's a shattering moment, but, <laughs> but that is the turning point for you. I, it essentially helps you involve, uh, influence others as well. God concurs. Yeah. Uh, so this, this, because the incident drives me to say this. So there is, a, there, is, there is a guy who wanted to become the king. King said, okay, you want to become king? He sent him to the chair for a day and there was a sword hanging on the top. Anytime it could fall. So you want to, do you want to become the CEO? So you need to ask that question. Do I really want to become the CEO? Is it required to be CEO of the bin control? The one good quality of a product manager is having no control but with an you know, officially, but still controlling the entire thing is a skill of a product manager because nobody reports to you, including the CEO. So you still control the CEO because you love what you're doing, right? Because cause what does the CEO want? CEO want is a very simple thing. You need to sell, you need to make money. We need to be sustainable. So product manager can marry to that concept saying that yes, this is the value that we are creating and you will be sustainable. So in that sense, Meaning I question the fact that I don't think, I'm, I don't know how many of you really think that you want to be the CEO of a product. Rather, I want to be the product manager of the product and do my job the best way that I can do. I think that is more sustainable in than thinking about a CEO because CEO has things that to do which is more finance related than anything else, which you probably don't want to do that. You get connected with the problem, do the damn thing right, and then let somebody worry about how to make money, right? Interesting view. Amit, your thoughts on it? Uh, so, I, I feel CEO is a bit of a misnomer word in product management term, right? So, CEOs are CEOs as always mentioned, right? So, like you said, CEO is like the buck stops here. So, if the CEO says, let's do this, everyone does that. Product management or product managers have a much more tougher job uh, of balancing act. First, he has to, or uh, he has to have a capability of saying no to CEO or CEOs being acting stupid a bit, right? Uh, that's the most uh, important part and tough part and the second tough, uh, toughest part basically is the uh, toughest part is uh, convincing the people or developers that whatever you want to get done is actually important because because that's what doesn't happen so everyone in the world will think whatever you're doing is the worthless job right and it's the least important thing in the company but 
maybe that's the most important thing in the company because customers want that stuff, right? That's where it comes in. So basically product managers are customer advocates. I, I feel that way, that CEOs are still an easy job and uh, uh, you can still say that, hey, hey, do this and things get done, right? And you still worry about your finances, but product managers have to make sure those projections, what CEOs making in front of board and everywhere their projections happen because if it doesn't, right, the first head to roll is product manager. <laughs> Interesting. Yes, please go on. So, so I think uh, you made some good points, Amit. Uh, but what I think is that in today's world, especially in the high-tech environment at high-tech companies, it is not as simple as CEO saying, do this and it will happen. <laughs> because it's the days of command and control are gone, right? It is mostly CEO has to sell the vision, they have to motivate. And even if they say, okay, product manager, do this, it doesn't necessarily happen, right? Similarly, I think a product manager's job is also to constantly sell the vision and convince the developers, the VP of engineering, the selling the CFO, right? All the people and all the stakeholders to so that everything happens in the best interest of the products. So that way, I think it is comparable, but it's at a different level. So. Okay. So I think one theme that comes across from all that you've said is that uh, product managers may not necessarily either want to be CEOs at an organization level, but at the same time for that particular product, either they should aspire to be the CEOs or at least take up that um, mantle of being a CEO and actually build the influence around, right? So that's something, so influence probably is the key word here, right? So let's come back to reality, right? So how does a product manager or what kind of responsibilities does a product manager have uh, in your respective organizations. Is this the picture that we painted, the reality or is this just the vision that we are aspiring for? Once all the panelists go through, I would like to have one person from the audience uh, to also share. So maybe uh, we'll get back to you, right? Uh, as to know what you think the reality is. So maybe let's start with Amit this time. Uh, all right. So, so, so I would rather go with this way. So recently I actually wrote a blog about a day in life of a product manager, right? Which typically everyone will... Uh, uh, people like Daxton said, uh, it, it's a very chaotic day uh, and every every division has it. So typically product manager what it does, right? Uh, it interacts with sales, marketing, operations, customer support, developers and then management and everything happens in a day and especially when the escalations are happening around. Now, now the problem happens is in one day you have to context switch so much, right? Uh, you're not just, okay, I'm focusing on my code, let me finish that, then I'll talk to you. You just can't do that, right? Because uh, you have to do justification to the product, right? And everyone needs your attention. That attention thing is very, very important for everyone, right? So a day in life of a product manager is very tough, uh, uh, which people sometimes take it like product management, oh, I just write some requirements, I'm done. You don't do that. For that, there are people who can write that down. It's a vision which you have to actually explain, which, which you were telling about, right? So it's convincing people. Uh, I have had a scenario where uh, developers straightforward refuse, no, I will not implement this because I don't think it makes sense. And I actually took three hours just to explain how it makes sense. And still he did not agree. And that's where I have to come in scene and say, hey, either you agree to me or we, we come to an agreement sometimes. And sometimes we have to just push our, put our foot down also, right? Then, no, this has to be done because I just can't convince the world always. So it's, it's a balancing act. You can't always put your foot down and say, do this. Or you can't always say, okay, we'll do a democratic way of uh, working. So, so it's, it's a tough day you spend on. Interesting. So Ahi, if you would like to. Yeah, I think... Um, See, the, whether we should be aspiring to be a CEO, uh, I, I wanted to put this word, this terminology is sometimes messy, right? You know, what is CEO? I don't know, right? You know, so the question is, are you, product managers should not develop that complex of inferiority. Just because I've become the CEO of the product doesn't make any different. If I'm a product manager true to myself, I'll actually do justice to the product and that is more important that regardless of you calling me Chaprasi or product manager, if as long as I'm doing the product and customer is happy, that should be the, you will be the connector between the business world and then the people who are really doing the plumbing. And that's your job, your job to basically see what the customer is saying and who is doing the plumbing inside the organization. So those connecting thing is important whether you wanted to call yourself CEO or not, doesn't really matter. And don't get into, at, at no given time, you should not get into the complex that, or infinity complex for that matter, that you wanted to become the CEO of the product. 
So I just, before we move on to yeah. Sujit, uh, uh, is that how you treat product management in your organization? Because I remember yeah. when you introduced yourself, you said your company is the product and yeah. you are the CEO, so you are the product manager by default. Yeah. So how do you see your role, I mean not just as a CEO, but yeah. as the product manager itself? Yeah. Sure. So I, I have a very, um, this, this is a very balancing uh, aspect that you could take it as. So the way I think as a company and specifically if you're playing the CEO role, I do not see there is a there is a marketing, there is a sales, and there is a product. Product includes the product manager and developer. So if you multiply them, any one of them cannot be negative or zero, right? So then the respectability within the organization, people as a developer need to have a equal respect that the product manager play a key role in making things happen. Similarly, the product manager should also understand that the developer plays an important role in doing that. Same thing with the sales guys, same thing with the marketing guys. So as a company, as a team, that we need to navigate the journey that we are navigating and need to have that mutual respect within the organization and need to have that culture of respecting each other's roles and responsibility in terms of achieving what we wanted to achieve. The end goal is if you can put a streamline. We wanted to create value for the customer and that value is important and that is our common point. So, so then stick to your gun saying that I am the product manager, I know what the sit I am doing and I will do it and then I will convince other people to do it along with me and that is more important. The product, product in the sense you 1 into 1 into 1, if 1 is 0 then, then you are set, right? Okay, thank you. Sujit, your thoughts? Yeah, so from my experience from a plethora of MNC to startup companies, I think what a product manager does varies. Right. Uh, if you look at an MNC situation, oftentimes there are even specialized roles within PMs, right? There is outbound, there is inbound, there is technical and so forth. But if you holistically look at a product manager, I think the journey starts with the customer, right? Oftentimes in MNCs, particularly in India, we lose that ability because the customer doesn't sit here. But an effective product manager is the one who can essentially interact observe and identify a problem, not necessarily listen to a solution from the customer, right? So that ability to observe the market or your customer segment is the number one thing a product manager should be doing, whether they do that is a separate thing, right? Now the second part is once you do that, then you come to the solution space and that solution space often in, in incorporates ideas from a vast number of people, including feasibility and other aspects. So that's where a more inward looking role comes into play and that has got the ability to you know, get people to work on it, that's selling your vision, get people to solve it, which is finding a solution and then basically delivering on a promise, right? So there are all these elements that need to be taken care of depending on the maturity of the product, depending on the maturity of the organization in working you know, or the scale at which individual pieces that you work on will vary day by day. And that is something that is, that is one extreme in a large organization, another one in a startup where you don't have people to do each one of these separately and you are the one taking care of all this. So I think a lot of it depends on the organization, the product that you work on, the maturity, the life cycle the product is in. But if there's one thing I would like to call out is essentially that connect with the customer and the problem that you're trying to solve. That should be the number one thing a product manager should be looking at on a daily basis. Interesting. So. Uh, I'll stay with you for a minute. Um, you work both in an MNC kind of an environment as well as in a startup kind of an environment, right? So one, one area where the roles are very clearly defined, uh, expectations are very clear and on the other side is uh, a little bit of ambiguity in terms of, you know, what is it that uh, is expected out of you. Uh, you end up doing a lot of other stuff which not probably on your plate, right? So from your both sides of the experience, yeah. what do you think works? Uh, in both sides. So for example, in a very clear MNC environment, what is it that you think is really good there? Yeah. And from a startup environment, what is the one thing that is really, really, really good? And one that you are currently following in your organization as well. Yeah. I think the stint in the startups has given new life to my thinking around product management, which I, uh, which I wished I had before I was in a MNC as well. And that is coming back to the point I made, which is around the ability to connect with customers, right? Being in the market, being uh, talking to them day by day to see whether the product makes sense, will sell. 
I think we often lose that for especially products that are slightly in a mature phase, right? It's more about features, it's more around the value that we can add based on our intuitive thinking, but hardly ever interaction. Oftentimes, the extreme that I see even in large cases where the connect happens is like very organized setups, right? Usability testing, we have 10 people come in, we observe what they do and then they go off. It's control settings. Now, frankly, you either go to their offices or you get them there and then there is a structured way of doing it. But what about their life on a regular basis where you can just be a part of it and you essentially visualize what they're going through? That is, I think, the part that I wished I could do more and, and I wished I do more, which I actually enjoy now in my startup. So that would be uh, the number one thing I would call out with respect to a contrast between what and... But on the other hand, there are advantages to what you do in an, in an MNC. I would say if you want to switch into a product manager role, it would be very hard to switch from any other role in a large company or a services company and then become an entrepreneur in a startup overnight. Uh, I haven't done it, but I would figure it is much more difficult because you haven't learned the art of at least the basics of product management. So in that sense, it's, a, it's an area where you have a controlled area where you can start to learn things before you take a deeper plunge into it. So that aspect I definitely do value in a large, larger company setting. Super. So Deepak, your thoughts on this? Yeah. So coming to your initial question, which is uh, what is the reality? Uh, do our product managers acting like CEOs or no? So I can also share some of my experiences uh, I have been in many startups and in some large companies. So, in Sterling Commerce, for example, which was a fairly large company, 600 million in revenue, we had about 65 products and clearly about seven product lines, right? So, each, each product line, about seven of them, had its own product management team. And from what I, what I saw, it was fairly clear that the people who had strong product management leaders and these people were also the people who had an end-to-end -end understanding of the business. Like they were almost running the PNL for that product line. They were the most successful. But, but it was not common. So there were others where it was not, not like that, right? So I think it's not common at all, even in large, mature, success, successful companies. In IBM, my experience was uh, that they have too far removed from the customer. And this is true with actually most large companies that most of the engineering, even product management and engineering are so far removed, far removed from the customer that there's no way that they are feeling the pain point of the customers and there's no way they can innovate that much as much uh, the one can in a startup environment or you have to create that culture of innovation which, which is not common at all. I think. Very interesting. I think uh, uh, this size of an organization actually has a large scale impact on how close you can get to a uh, customer. So, if, if I may ask you to introduce yourself uh, and your thoughts. Hi, uh, my name is Senthil. Uh, I'm an MBA student uh, uh, in IPL. I, in the previous session, I wanted to ask this question. There is this popular belief that we Indians are less of a innovators and do a fairly good job in terms of product management. Uh, unfortunately, one of the panelists from a previous session debunked that also as a myth and they told, uh, forget innovation, we are not even there in terms of doing a good product management. Now here, we are talking about how to be Indians. 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 <laughs> so now we are talking about uh, being a CEO of a product now, that's again also another spectrum altogether. So where are we really, you know, are we uh, at a very startup or we are, we are there somewhere and we need to push ourselves up? So can I ask you a question back? Yeah. So are you a product manager as well? Aspiring product manager. Aspiring product manager. Yeah. Uh, okay, so do you know of any product managers? The panels. No, not the panels. Personally, do you know someone? Um, no. No? Is there anyone here who is a product manager in their current role right now? Right? So can one of you just volunteer yourself? One of you. To which part? That we are not even innovating as yet or? No, in terms of target being the CEO of a product, are we even doing the basic basic of what it takes to be a product manager? Are we there at any of 
So okay. if you could introduce yourself yeah, yeah. and which company you work for. I am uh, Karthik. I work as a product manager in Redbus. So uh, to answer your question, right, I had uh, read Amit's blog, incidentally, <laughs> on uh, what it takes to be a <coughs> product manager, right? Uh, if you read that, it kind of ironically describes what we go through every day. Uh, so in terms of what, if we have the integrity as to what it takes to be a product manager, right? Yeah, I think we do totally. Uh, you see the number of imports which are happening, right? People from here who went abroad, uh, leading global organizations with uh, for product management, product roles especially, and coming up and uh, setting shops in India. That's one trend to prove that. Uh, and by as such, right? So this role has been there in multiple forms and phases before. So even people who are currently doing product management, they need not have been doing this their entire life, right? Uh, it's kind of an, uh, what to say, new age role in that sense. Uh, in the morning session opened with that, right? We didn't have this uh, job description probably five, six, seven years ago. Okay, I was in, I am Lucknow, uh, five years ago. So, uh, the, uh, the five years ago, uh, startups would not even get a slot. Okay, now you see the uh, slot zero placements. McKinsey's and BCG's come in later. Okay, so then it, so this is a trend I'm saying, one of the trends to uh, show how it's born up. And you won't see people chopping up there if we didn't have the integrity to get that happen. And we are in the product data forum anyways. No, Hopefully it answers. Yeah, I mean, maybe you. Let, let me say something. Since so, you have a fan here, maybe you should. No, it's okay. So, no, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, man. Thanks, thanks for reading it. Uh, so, so, I'll disagree a bit about being Indian or not. See, I'm, I'm a, given the JNU scenario, again, I'll not go into nationalism, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but I'll say that, see, we, first, first of all, I believe Indians are self-critical a lot. Like, we, we pull down ourselves a lot. Even if we can do it, we don't do it. Uh, the problem with being this statement is uh, fearlessness. Like, we don't have fearlessness, right? There are people who are fearless, uh, who don't care what happens to them, right? Uh, no one wants to die, right? But then you have to try. So, so how many times have you thought like, hey, I want to be a product manager, chuck this job here, go to hell. Let me try something. How, what will happen? At the max, I'll get a salary cut, right? 50%? Let's go for it. What will happen max, right? After that, one year, maybe I'll not make money, I'll not be a good product manager, I'll get back. I won't die. I won't lose anything, right? The loss you have is just monetary loss for one year, one and a half years. People just don't go beyond that boundary. So product manager is nothing about like a designation. I don't believe in a designation product manager, right? Product manager is an attitude. It's more about getting things done. It's about like you have a vision, you want to make it realize. If your CEO doesn't agree, either you make him agree or you just go away and make your own company, right? That's how Flipkart happened. That's how all the companies happen, right? I'm sure he'll make a company out of Redbus. He'll find some flaws in Redbus and uh, maybe incorporate the changes and create a new startup, right? So it's, it's about fearlessness. It's about just doing things, right? We are in a self-critical mode always. And that's that's what you see around. So, so I think coming back to your question, I, I do think that as a as a discipline, right? And yeah, so, as as a discipline of product management, it's it's very new in India. I think it's a. Uh, I mean, uh, we we never had any formal and kind of a methodical way of product management, management until recently. So, of course, now we see a lot of successes, right? But we have a long way to go compared to how product management and how maturely it is handled in US, Germany, and you know countries like that. We are far, far away from that. I mean, we are catching up, but we are far away from that, I think. Can I add something? Yes, please. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. It's, it's essentially the journey of maturity compared to where we are at versus a Silicon Valley or anywhere else that you might be comparing. I think fundamentally there are some issues. One, let's start with education, right? Education in India is very siloed. We, all of us, most of you may be engineering and I am too. If you look at foreign education, you have the ability to do multidisciplinary studies, right? Though you are studying engineering, I can do calligraphy. I can do economics. I can do a few medical courses, right? Psychology as well. Psychology. All those are very important when you finally think about it from a consumer understanding perspective. We lack that and we have to learn how to do it on our job today. Imagine a generation that comes up in, in that kind of an approach. 
It will take a few years from now, but that's one part of it. And also on the design thinking part of it, right? You know, all of us come from a very um, uh, problem solving kind of background where, hey, this is a solution, take it or use it, right? But the whole design approach is just starting to evolve and we have to learn it on our job today, right? So there's miles to go right, before we can say. But having said that, you know, Indians have adapted well in other cultures and I've, I've done tremendously well. So it's not a problem of whether it is Indians or otherwise. It's more about the situation that we are in right now. It will adapt over time and things will definitely get better. And as people see more success, uh, more people will want to do it. And the more people do it, it's a virtuous cycle, right? So, and you'll never know when this virtual cycle actually becomes a tornado and actually sweeps through the country. So, yeah. it's a journey as everyone yeah. has said. I think, I think I agree with what Amit said. It's a mindset problem. And I think uh, the little bit of de deviated thinking that what other people basically said here is why, do you, why does that thought come to you as a young person? Meaning, why are you thinking about country? Meaning, do you, are you thinking you are a product manager? Can you do this thing? And I don't, I don't believe the concept that India doesn't have where miles ahead, you know, behind. I don't think that is true. We do it differently. Why the Western product manager definition has to be a benchmark? I, I, we can build a Kikas product and it has been built Kikas product from India and we are building Kikas product from India. So without product manager, how can it happen? So who plays that role? Do you have a job profile? Do you have way the Western people hire a product manager? That probably we don't do. How does that matter? Right? Is absolutely do not scale yourself. MBA come from somewhere. You know, that doesn't mean that you have to be MBA to do things. Right? Do things. And we are doing things. India has product management skill from thousands of years before. Otherwise, we would not have Kama Sutra. Right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a product management basics, right? Otherwise, they cannot build that principles, right? So you think in that terms, we have it, we are doing it already. So this actually uh, uh, helps me segue into my next question, right? Which is, uh, what kind of skill sets or tool sets uh, are needed in order for a product manager to function like a CEO of that particular product? Uh, do they have it? Um, is another question that we can probably touch upon. So maybe this time we start with Sujit. Okay, um, so I think the number one skills is influence skills. But having said that, it's, it's a lot to do with people skills. This command and control setup that we are all used to. And the way I think of it is as a parent, you have, you know, let's say you have to get something done with, you know, eight of your children, right? There's two ways you can get it done. One is, hey, this is what we have to do, figure it out how to do it, let's see if it happens. Another one is, hey, you do this, you do this, and together this is what is going to happen. But there's another part that I, that I think is important, which is how do we get it done with somebody else's children, right? Um, this is something that I personally went through, and basically I teach a kid's choir, right? I, I conduct, uh, I teach a kid's choir. Secret skills. <laughs> But it was actually a way to essentially learn how to control or get things out of people where there is a team that needs to essentially deliver. And it actually helped me in my uh, interaction with people in general, right? If you can get a team of kids to sh essentially deliver on something, uh, essentially without one voice standing out from the rest, and together they deliver a great performance, that gives you the ability to show that you can get things done. So it doesn't necessarily have to come from the workplace. So these skills can come from multiple set of things that you do. It can come from a, a, a sports arena, right? And so for a coach is a good example and so forth. So I think that ability to influence others to, towards a common vision would be the number one thing for a product manager. So yeah, I, I agree with that point completely. And Besides that, the skills and tools, I think it is good for a product manager to know multitude of things, right? Like uh, not only have an ability to listen to the customers, understand the domains or domain knowledge, have kind of a very good idea of the technology or the engineering side of it because without that they cannot kind of define what is to be done. And also I think financial side which is 
pricing, you know, how, how do you make money out of it, stuff like that. So, so all, all the different domains have to kind of come together. You need to have a pretty good grounding on those aspects to be a, you know, a, a successful product manager. Thank you. Ahi, you want to go next? Uh, what is the question again? I lost the thought. So the question was, uh, what kind of skill set or tool set do product managers need uh, to build in, in yeah, themselves yeah. That's good. in order That's to… Good. I, I think that the, the single and foremost uh, capacity that a product manager need, whether CEO or not, um, is able to connect, right? Able to, able to see through all spectrum, right? And not, see there's a, con, there's a control that, that they're saying, right? The more you control, you will actually more get out of your hand. So the people in the organization will have report is that they're controlling. But product managers sometimes have to control the entire thing without having given the control to them. And that skill is so powerful. And that, how does it, how can it come from? So you have to, the best way to control another human being is to basically do something for them, give something to them. The moment you give something to them, they will automatically come into your fold. And then you can almost control them, that how this, what they should do for you. So those ability, that humbleness, if you can create in people, likability if you can build. If, in a, if you go to a company, if the product manager is loved, you will actually see a good product. So then the, you need to see that people, whether it's a developer, let it be CEO, let it be the marketing guy, sales guy, they can come, oh, I can talk to him, he will listen. So he'll, this, this ability if you can build, I think you can definitely do a fantastic, be the connector, be the sutradhar, they call it, right? So the, that connector, if you can become, uh, you'll definitely, you know, sort of build a good product. Super. Thank you, Amit. Your thoughts? Uh, I'll, I'll say um, ability to change very quickly or able to adapt to change very quickly is, is uh, very important. So take feedbacks. Uh, if, if you are, if you made a mistake in your assumptions, correct it yourself and accept it that yes, I made a mistake, change it and accept it publicly. There's no harm, right? And change those things, make it happen again, do it again and again and again, right? Uh, until it gets right. Don't compromise in quality, get the change done, follow up with people. Is this is a hard task. But that is required, right? So it's more of a people's job, a lot, a lot more people's job. There'll be a lot of tools on the internet, uh, like you can download from internet and all that stuff. Yeah. There'll be a lot of technologies or methodologies you can follow, but then all it falls apart if you can't connect back, right? And if you can't change, if you can't accept your mistakes, uh, there's no harm in making mistakes, by the way. And speaking out your mind is very important because if you don't speak up your mind, uh, no one else can do it for you, right? So, and that's what you do, right? It's, it's a vision you have to convince on. Very interesting. So. There are a couple of things which I personally think, uh, if I may take the liberty to add my thoughts as well, is that uh, two very, very important skills that uh, almost every good product manager uh, that I have come across has inherently is uh, curiosity and imagination. The ability to stay curious around the customer, around what is happening in the customer's life, around what is happening internally in the organization. And based on that curiosity, identifying what is it that they can do for their customers or for their organization and having that imagination to be able to look further down the road and to come up with the vision for the product, which can then be made into reality. So these two skills are meta skills as they call it, which I think uh, as uh, individuals we need to cultivate, but as product managers, this is something which becomes a key skill. Uh, in order for uh, for us to succeed in that role. I'll just add one more thing. Yes, please. Uh, so, so most of the product managers think like ideation and innovation is good and they go by gut feels innovations. But right, gut feels are good, but do go with data too, right? Every point should have data. And if you don't have data, gut feel won't last long. So make sure that you are speaking up your mind with gut feels and everything. But when you're convincing people, you have data to support it. And, and measure every single thing, every single aspect. If you feel it's unmeasurable, it is not worth doing it. Super. Mm -hmm. So, now my next question is, okay, so people have sat and listened to us talk about for, for almost 40, 45 minutes now. So, what is the one tip that you can give to them that they can implement as soon as they go back to their office, which can actually help them do their jobs better or become better product managers? So, maybe this time I start with Ahi and then move. Okay. 
Yeah, I think I will uh, I, I will be similar thing that what Amit said before. It's, it's something called something that you can uh, the change management, right? In a point of view, right? So you can have a plan because every product manager will have a plan to release the product. But if given the farmer's analogy, if he is basically planned to cultivate certain things and to produce certain things, the rain happens or rain doesn't happen, things changes for him. So based on that, the plan completely changed, right? So those uh, that is surprises could come in any given situation. Future is not predictable. As a product manager, do not predict the future. Have a plan, have a goal because you have a plan, but be ready to change as soon as the environment around you changes. And that, if you bring that as a skill set to you, I think you definitely will give you a navigation for you is going to be powerful. Thanks. Um, Sujit, maybe you want to go next? Yeah, I think uh, a good part would be to involving yourself in as many things as possible around the product, right? Even things that are not in your control, let's say hiring of engineers, hiring of designers, uh, design decisions, uh, of course, as you start off, you may not be adding value, but in involving yourself is important because you know the background of anything that is happening. You can adapt to people-related decisions. The value will come over time, right? But get involved in as many things as you can, anything related to the product. It starts with the customer. It has got your internal stakeholders. In every decision possible, get involved. Business decisions, sales calls, Right, those are valuable insights that you can be, you can get in. Right, though you may be a passive attendee, but involve yourself. I, I, I think that would be a great start. And stay curious while you are part of right. these decisions. So why this is being done and what are the logic behind? Great. So that actually will continue to add value to yourself. So thank you. Yeah, I have some of the same similar things, which is you know, first is listen well. So be a great listener, especially from customers and the ecosystem and. Secondly, you have a much more wider holistic view of the various parts of the business. So, Amit? Uh, so, I, I'll say a tip or assignment, we can call it, right? So, when you walk out of this room, think about it. Uh, how many of you feel that your product has a mistake or something which you know about it, no one is fixing it? <laughs> Only these people, rest everyone is saying product is perfect in your companies? <laughs> perfect products. Perfect products? That's amazing, actually, because I don't believe so. So, so if you feel that there's a flaw in your product and no one's listening, go back, write a one page or an email to your managers and peers and say, this is how this problem is identified and how it should be fixed and how a customer life will be important and better. If you can do that, I'm sure that there'll be a product manager team which is waiting to hire you. Very nice. So, um, I'm hiring product manager. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that kind of brings me to the end of the questions that I have prepared. So, if you have any questions, we may probably take them now. So, if you can just, you can just introduce yourself and then which company and then ask your question. So, my question about the product management is this. Uh, so, as a product manager, when you join a big company, so there are different uh, uh, moving parts. One part is probably the development team, one part is the design team. There is a CEO vision which you need to carry ahead, even though if probably your culture is not probably fitting with that vision. And then there, is, uh, then there is a testing team, then there's a sales team, then there's a marketing team. So what do you suggest as an individual who joins an organization, probably an MNC, would, would, would need the steps to drive uh, the synchrony across these moving parts? So who would like to take Moving parts are a very important uh, reality of working in large companies. I think there are two parts to it. Your definition of your role with respect to the boundaries and the limits beyond what is identified today. Uh, you are in charge of a developer community. I don't know if it's specific to a product line or a set of products, but assume, assuming that your role is limited to developer community and their needs. So in your case, your starting point is a target segment, right? We don't know the problems that they have nor what IBM can solve for them, right? So a good starting point is independent of what IBM is doing today. If you can interact with the startups and identify what they need to solve their problems, map it back to what IBM can do and will do over time, 
and align it with CEO's vision, that is the role that you can probably play today. But the starting point there needs to be, rather than think of the products that you're already offering and the things that you have that you want startups to adapt, you will have to start the other way, essentially. Go with a blind slate. Sit in a startup. I'll, I'll give you an example. When I transitioned out of Yahoo to start my company, the first four days, I just sat at businesses, local businesses. I went to a photo studio, sat there for a day. I went to a pizza chain, I sat there. I, I got a tour of the kitchen, the supply chain, everything for a few days. Right? I had no solutions in mind. I had no problems in mind. But when you do that, even for just three or four days, right, just sit with them and understand what they're going through. Then, essentially, we get to the problem statement. Then we map back and so forth. So I would say start there. Since your, your role is identified for your target segment, I, I think the needs are endless for startups. Talk to us. You know, any one of these people can tell you what we need and where IBM can help, right? You know, but there are endless needs. And you might get new ideas that nobody's even thinking about today. So that would be my advice for you. Just spend time with startups. Forget about what you're offering for a few days. Yes. And essentially, yeah, absolutely. And then take it from there. So, and do the same thing with the other members of the community as well. Maybe spend some time with the sales guys. Maybe spend some time with the marketing guys, understanding what they're doing, how they're doing. Ask if, they can, if you can sit through some of those meetings. I think that will open up your perspective uh, to a whole different world. And if you are curious and if you can actually figure out where is it that your passion lies, where the CEO's passion lies, the alignment happens and that kind of clicks and takes you uh, places, right? Anyone else? Yes, there's one more. One, this is the last question and then I'll kind of summarize in the interest of Hi, time. I'm Sankshep and I manage the B2B products at Redbus. Uh, one of the typical uh, problems we face or uh, typical situations we face is you know, a, a product manager, you know, spends a lot of time on, on a particular feature, building the story, writing out, detailing it and everything. But uh, due to any of the constraint, you know, the design or development constraint, the feature is not picked up. So often, you know, I find someone from my team uh, becoming very disappointing, uh, disappointed or stressed out saying that, you know, I had worked so many days or so many weeks on this feature and uh, look, it's it's not even on the roadmap for the next one month or two months. So, how do you tackle this situation and how do you keep the team motivated? I mean, do you want to take that? Or do you want to take that? Uh, so, so, it happens with me too and my team too, right? So, so uh, very natural. Uh, so, the time is limited, the space is limited in the product. Like, we can't build 10 features in a product. So, typically the way I handle in my team is like, we don't shoot down ideas. You know, ideas uh, are good, but then there is a time for it. We always build it and plan it, right? So, so if let's say you came up with an idea and said, hey, let's implement this, and I say, no, this is not valued, we have reasoning. Now, considering that we are rational people, right, and we are, we are logical people, we will argue, we will discuss. You never know what comes out. So sometimes idea on the face doesn't look enough attractive, or enough, it doesn't make sense. But when you uh, make a deep dive down into the idea, go into implementations because the guy who believes in that, right, will make sure that it gets sold, right, because it has to go through or he'll see through that, yeah, there are faults, I can't implement it. And in both the cases, he will understand, either either the manager or the guy will understand this feature is important and it will go through the uh, feature list or the guy who has the idea will understand that, oh, yes, it has faults, I need to correct those faults. But it has to be a discussion. There is no other way you can just shoot down that idea. I, I feel that that's the best way to handle it. Yeah, I mean, I can just add a little bit that, see, it's mostly about communication. So a specific person who is, who is writing the product features, we have to align them to the full product, not just get kind of emotionally attached to the particular feature, right? Because when you are trying to define a product, in reality, you will throw away more than what you will build, actually. Because that's the nature of any innovation, right? Many times you build a whole product and then you throw away and then you build a new one. So we should not get attached to specific small features or things that you are specifically working on, but have an uh, attachment or alignment to the larger mission of the whole product and the company. Why the product? And why? Yeah, yeah I, I think that's, that's very good. I'll just add to one line. So the, the, 
because you say that I spent a lot of time and then you're feeling bad. It's you that matters, not the value that you're giving to the customer. So if you sort of align yourself, the value that you're giving to the customer is important. And then if you're emotionally feeling or emotionally, physically, mentally, you're feeling that this is must go, there's no way you cannot do this. It has to go because I know 10 customer has told me this. Then go full blast on those one features instead of 10. That thing has to happen. You need to go sell that vision. Right? If nobody's listening, in the, in the extent that you can go, you can threaten people. I really feel deadly about it. Let's go do it. If you're not doing it, I'm quitting. Right? So they, they say that this guy is not joking. He is serious. He is serious. He's really, and if you have done good job, they will, I, I do not believe people, because you are thinking about good for the product. If you say, no, I spent five days, how can you do that? That's ego. Throw that away. Right? So, thank you. Um, so, uh, in the interest of time, let me just try to summarize what we spoke and what my takeaway from the entire conversation is. Uh, you'll each have your own takeaways, but my takeaway is that more and more as you think of product managers and the kind of role that they are performing, in order for them to be successful, you need to think of an analogy like for example, product managers being the kind of uh, uh, the conductors of an orchestra. With every element, for example, sales being one part of the orchestra, marketing being one another part, development team being another part, customers being another part, right? So, and how you are able to orchestrate the entire thing so that you are adding value uh, to the end customer and always remember the purpose of why you started with the product right and why and what problem are you trying to solve and for whom as long as you keep these two things or three things in mind i think uh, uh, you'll do well uh, as a as a product manager uh, irrespective of whether uh, uh, you are a ceo or or not right so the last thing i'd like to end with is always remember rule number 6 now how many of you know what rule number 6 is Nobody? So rule number six, uh, as uh, Rosamund Zanders and, uh, 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 talks about in their book, The Art of Possible is that don't take yourself too goddamn seriously. Loosen up, have fun. Very, very critical. One of the reasons why startups have this kind of culture where you do a lot of innovation is that they have fun together. Have fun with your constituents. Don't just be professional, professional, professional. What that does is that loosens up people. And that actually creates bonds, which then you can use to influence and orchestrate uh, the entire elements of uh, uh, the orchestra so that you can succeed as a product manager and the product can succeed and do well in the market. So thanks a lot for listening to us. I hope we have added value in the last one hour. Thanks a lot panelists for taking time Thank and you. being here as well. Great fun. Right? Thank you everyone. Thank you. It's been a fantastic discussion. Thank you so much for making it uh, so fantastic and it was quite enlightening too. And thank you audience for making it quite interactive post lunch session. I know it's quite tough but you really made it. And uh, may I request uh, Mukesh Gupta to identify one best question. Good fun. Nice had two questions. I think I would give it to the red bus. Uh, Can you please come here to receive the award? So I may ask maybe you know, one of Excuse the panelists to give it a Amit, two, Amit, you can do it. Two <laughs> We would like also Mukesh Gupta to present a little memento to all the panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and I request. Uh, I'll, I'll just jump down. <laughs> and I request Chaitanya to present the memento to Mr. Mukesh Gupta. Thank you so much.